there everyone and welcome to another Orca lesson. In this lesson we are going to talk about some of the incredible journeys that whales go on every year. As we already know from lesson four, this is called migration. And this video is the second in a set of three lessons about whale migrations. My name is Anna and I work for Orca. Orca are a whale and dolphin conservation charity who are dedicated to the protection of whales, dolphins and porpoises and their homes in the oceans around the UK and the rest of the world. As we already know, migration is known as the seasonal movement of animals from one region to another. And we already know that many animals all around the world migrate. But the species we're going to focus on are our large baleen whales who travel thousands of miles from their breeding grounds to feeding grounds every year. So briefly, this is what happens on their migration. So we know that whales move from high latitudes, where there's lots of food, to low latitudes with warmer waters, where they breed and have their young. And then they take their young with them on their migration all the way back up to the feeding grounds in the high latitudes again. But why do they travel so far? Well, these big whales come with big bellies. So humpback whales, grey whales and the North Atlantic right whale can eat more than one tonne of food a day. And that's about the same size as a car. But blue whales can eat more than four tonnes a day, which is about the same weight as an elephant. So they have to travel to these high latitudes where there's loads and loads of food to feed. But why do they have to eat so much food? Well, these whales need to eat as much krill as they possibly can in the krill-rich waters in the high latitudes before heading to their breeding grounds where there's virtually nothing to eat. So whales only feed when they're at high latitudes. They do not feed when they're in the warm tropical waters because there's much less food here for them to eat. So really they only feed for a few months of the year and the rest of the time they actually fast so they don't eat during their migration and their time in the tropics. So they have to eat as much as they can so that they have food in their reserves for the rest of the year. So why do whales bother traveling such large distances to the tropics when all the food is up near the poles? Why can't whales just breed and feed in the same place and save themselves the trouble? Well, they travel to the warm tropical waters because these are perfect whale nursery grounds because the warmer sea temperatures allow the calf to build up a thick layer of blubber to help it survive when it makes the long migration to the colder feeding grounds. There's a reason why whales are so big and their large size and their thick blubber, that's the fatty layer all the way around their bodies, helps them to conserve heat so it keeps them nice and warm. So where do you think the calves get all their food from to build up this fatty layer when they're in the tropics? Well, remember that all cetaceans, that word meaning whales, dolphins and porpoises, are marine mammals. And one characteristic of being a mammal is that you suckle milk from your mother. So baby whales, they suckle milk from their mothers and that milk is really fatty rich. So it builds up a really lovely fat layer for the calf to help keep it nice and warm, getting ready for its migration. But how many litres of milk does a blue whale calf drink in a day, do you think? Do you think it's 150 litres? 350 litres? Or 600 litres? So blue whale calves can drink over 600 litres of their mother's milk every single day. That's about the same as seven and a half bathtubs. So the mother and the calf have stayed together in these warm tropical waters where the calf has built up a thick blubber layer and it's feeling really strong for its long migration. And at the end of the winter, 
the mother whale is starting to get really hungry. She's barely eaten at all and has been feeding her calf seven and a half bath tubs of milk a day. So as soon as the calf is big enough, the mother and calf journey side by side across the ocean back towards the poles, a migration which can be thousands of miles long. And it's not an easy journey to make. There are many dangers present. And one of the main dangers to whales traveling with their calves is that they might get hunted on by killer whales. So now we're going to look in a bit more detail about a humpback whale's migration. So we'll start off in low latitudes, these lovely warm tropical waters where, as we already know, whales come to breed and to have their young. So when a humpback whale is about five years old, she is able to breed. So she meets a male at the breeding ground and mates. And a humpback whale is pregnant for about 11 months. And during this time, she'll be able to get in a whole migration cycle when she's pregnant. So she'll take that long journey, say for example, around the Caribbean, up to the Arctic, where she'll feed and feed and feed for months. Remember that for the rest of the year, she doesn't feed. So she's got to feed enough for herself and she knows she's going to have to feed enough to feed her calf milk during the winter as well. This map here is going to show you the humpback whales migration routes. In orange, we have the breeding grounds. And in blue, we have the feeding grounds in the Northern Hemisphere and in the Southern Hemisphere. And here we can see the migration routes between them as well. As you can see, these humpback whales have a worldwide distribution. They can pretty much be seen in every ocean all around the world. And you might be wondering how long the migration is. Well, on average, it's about 3,100 miles or 5,000 kilometers. However, we do know that some humpback whales have been known to migrate up to 10,000 miles. That's 16,400 kilometers, a very, very long way. So on the map here, can you see that I've labeled Iceland and the Caribbean? In Iceland, whales will typically leave these summer feeding areas in late October or early November and it takes them about a month to make the 7,000 kilometre journey south to the Caribbean. And then they'll travel all the way back up to Iceland in March. You might be wondering how fast humpback whales swim. Humpback whales are capable of travelling at around about 5 miles an hour. But during such a long journey, they average only about 1 mile an hour and they'll rest and socialise along the way on their migration. To put that into perspective, an average human walk is about three miles an hour, so it's a little slower than what we walk. But remember, they have much further to go. And when the female whale reaches the warm tropical waters once again in these low latitudes, she will give birth to her calf. Humpback whale calves are born weighing about two tonnes, and are four to five metres long when they're born. So that's the same length as one car, but the same weight as two cars. And once the humpback whale calf has built up its fatty, rich layer, that's called the blubber, remember, it'll take the long migration with its mother all the way up to these high latitudes where they will feed. And it's a very long way for this calf when they reach these feeding grounds, the mother and the calf will both feed and then they will travel all the way back down to the warm tropical waters once again. And then the cycle will start over with. So a humpback whale calf will only be with its mother for one migration. And during this time, the mother will kind of teach the baby where to go. Humpback whale calves only stay with their mothers for one year, so that's the only chance they get to learn the migration. 
After a few months of being in warm tropical waters, the calf will start its own migration on its own. And a female humpback whale will give birth to a calf about once every two or three years. Researchers at Washington University found that a mother and a calf travelled all the way from Costa Rica, all the way down to the Antarctic, and all the way back again in only 161 days. That's just over five months. And that round trip was 8,300 kilometres, or 5,160 miles. What an incredible long way to go in such a short amount of time. Humpback whales can live to about 50 years old. So think of all the miles they will travel in their lifetimes. So you might also be wondering, how do we know how far these whales travel? Well, much of our knowledge about whale migration is from photo identification, especially for humpback whales. Humpback whales have patterns of black and white markings and scars on the underneath of their tail flukes that are unique to each whale, just like a human fingerprint. So if someone takes a photograph of a whale, say in the Caribbean, and then someone takes a picture of the same whale in Iceland, we know how far roughly that whale has travelled. So looking at these two whales, do you think these are pictures of the same whale or two different whales? Can you see how the patterning is different on the underside of their tail flukes? These are two different whales. Now let's look at the blue whale migration. And just like humpback whales, blue whales can be found in oceans worldwide. If we have a look at their migration map, you can see some of their migration routes are also quite similar to humpback whales as well. As you can also see from the migration map, there is actually no overlap between the blue whales that are found in the northern hemisphere and the blue whales that are found in the southern hemisphere. So there are actually two separate populations of blue whales around the world. Southern Hemisphere blue whales are much larger than Northern Hemisphere blue whales as well. And that's the same for humpback whales. Northern Hemisphere humpback whales never meet Southern Hemisphere humpback whales, despite sometimes both visiting the same warm waters around the equator in those low latitudes. This is because when it's the Northern Hemisphere's winter, when humpback whales are in low latitudes breeding, it's summer in the Antarctic, so southern hemisphere humpback whales are feeding there at the same time. But when it's the northern hemisphere summer, humpback whales are in high latitudes in the Arctic feeding, when the southern hemisphere humpback whales are in the low latitudes breeding, so they never meet each other. If we were to rank the top three whale migrators, in third place we would have the blue whale. In second place we would have the humpback whale, but who do you think is at the top? Which species of whale do you think migrates the furthest? Do some of your own research and see if you can find out and we will be revealing the answer in the next lesson. So to recap, we know why whales migrate so far. And we know that humpback whales and blue whales travel thousands of miles between their feeding and breeding grounds. And in the next lesson, we'll find out which species of whale migrates the furthest and we'll be learning about some species of cetaceans that do not migrate and why. Thank you again so much for listening. We hope you've enjoyed this lesson. If you want to learn more about orca, you can visit our website. That's www.orcaweb.org.uk. And if you are enjoying these lessons and are able to make a donation, that would be very much appreciated to help us support our vital conservation work. Thank you very much.